Thanks for watching Backstory. We leave you tonight with this. 27 million people visit the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893. It marks the 400th anniversary of Columbus's voyage. The Chicago World's Fair showcases innovations like electricity, motion pictures, the first Ferris wheel. It was Chicago's coming of age moment after the Great Fire. It was a place where juicy fruit gum was introduced and Aunt Jemima waffle mix. Don Meyer is a music professor at Lake Forest College. As part of a Mellon grant to preserve artifacts from Chicago's past, he investigates library archives to learn more about music from the fair. All he finds is the sheet music that's sold as souvenirs. In the 19th century, a common form of entertainment was parlor piano music. Music recording does exist in 1893, but the technology is still in its infancy. There were no recordings, basically, of this period. I gathered together the sheet music, and I sat down with Chris, the pianist, and we worked together deciding which ones might be most interesting to do. We did a little bit of arranging, too, just to make sure that it sounded appealing. So we created an album. I think there are about 20 songs on it. Vocalist Brad Jungworth. I will sing you a song and it won't be very long. Pianist Chris White and violinist Kate Carter. So I just tried to think about how that might have manifest with, say, a family playing together in the home. You know, someone picks up a violin and like what might have sounded like. I do also find them to be charming and, you know, they have that nostalgia. So it got me feeling like, oh, I wish I could attend the fair. But, you know, I have associations with this theme, just video games and, and cartoon music. So it's hard, hard to get that out of my head. I will sing you a song. It won't be very long. You may recognize it too, the Hoochie Coochie. The Hoochie Coochie song was originally a folk song, but it was used at the Egyptian exhibit on the Midway. And it was America's first introduction to belly dancing. And so they called it the Hoochie Coochie Dance. And it was considered sort of scandalous. It became a super popular hit. It appears in Bugs Bunny and other things as well. It's considered nostalgic, even in 1893. The writer's objective is to make money. For Meyer, the goal is bringing history to life. When you listen to this music as a music professor, what jumped out at you? Did it surprise you? Did it seem all oh, really corny or like what, what, what jumped out at you? It is definitely corny <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I find it charming. It, it kind of grew on me over time. To me it gives us sort of an interesting insight into American culture in the 1890s. And it seems people living more than a century later find it interesting, too. Surprisingly, it has gotten a number of hits on Spotify. It seems to have a, a minor resurgence of popularity. It completely baffles us, honestly. <laughs> <laughs>